Welcome to Weekly Meeple Chat, Week 7, and we're doing another uh, two segments on data chat based on uh, over two years of collecting uh, data on Board Game Geek of what games we've played. And so this particular data chat is about the top 10 games we want to play again. Hello, I'm Julie. And I'm David. So uh, if you saw last week's episode, we focused on uh, games, top 10 games that uh, we played from year June 2017 to June 2018. And then we looked at our top 10 games that we've been keeping track for two years on Board Game, Board Game Geek from June 2016 to June 2018. And now we're looking at that data again. And we're looking at, again... Uh, the games that we haven't played in a long time that we liked and just want to play again. Right. So we've played over 300 games in those two in that two-year period. A lot of games. And so when we look back at it, it says like, well, you know, since we have over 2,000 games in our collection, yeah, there's games that we says, well, we should play that again, but, and we'll explain why we might not have, but we do mm -hmm. want to play them again. And so we, this is kind of like setting goals. So let's look at the, the first one. Uh, we okay. each made our list separately. And so uh, it will be a little bit of a surprise uh, for both of us when we look at it. So we're doing top 10 first. Yes. Okay. Number All right. 10. So my top 10 is Tiny Epic Galaxies, which we backed on Kickstarter. It's a dice rolling, action selection area influence, race to control so many points. And so the reason why I like this game is that it's quick playing. It's very strategic and it has luck in the right area. See, other uh other uh, space exploration <laughs> conquest games, they have a lot of luck involved. Oh. So in other words, you might draw a tile that's near your empire and it's not a good tile. So then you're, you fall behind other players mm -hmm. or it's a really good tile and, and then it becomes a uh, the rich get richer type thing. And this game yeah. avoids that. Well, that's good. So and I, I know you like this one. So that's why when I looked at the 10 games that, that uh, I want to play again, I picked games that I know that you would like to play. Ah, oh, I don't remember that game, so that will be fun for me to play yeah. again. So here we go. Let's take a look at yours. Okay, my number 10 is for sale. And this is a card bidding and selling game, a uh, card game. Um, and you have to play this with three or more players, which makes it a little bit hard for us to be able to play this often because if the boys aren't home with us, we don't have that third person to, to help us play it. Right. Um, Maybe that's why we don't play it as much, but Maybe. we'll set a goal to play it more often with David or Eddie. Yeah, I like that. And you just win by getting the most points. And it's first part of the game is you um, bid on uh, cards. And you bid on different properties. Bid on different properties. And at the end, you're trying to sell your properties. And right, because what you're doing is then is you're selling your properties for checks. Yes. And so you're trying to get the most get money. Get the most money at the end. So it's, so it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, so those are two that we want to play more often. Definitely. All right, so let's see what the next one is. Number nine. Number nine for me is Legend of Andor. Now, I didn't say this. These games you've only played once or twice in the last two years. Correct. So that kind of surprised us. So this is a cooperative scenario adventure game, and it's fantasy-based. So... It's very. It's a thematic dungeon crawl, but it's it's more strategic than tactical. So it's not like a miniature game where you're you're uh, going from room to room. This is more on a, a, a geography based on a, on a land, uh, as opposed to a uh, room to room. So it has a very excellent introductory rule set. It was easy to learn, and it has nice tension uh, between the scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, we only played the first scenario, and we did well at that. Uh, so we want to play more. I don't remember this game at all. Yeah, I know. To That's be okay. honest, I you... I don't remember a lot of these games. To be honest with you guys, because like David said, we haven't played them in you know two years or so, and we've made them, maybe play them the most twice. And so we only played this one once. This one, okay, it's even. But I know it you liked it, me. so that's why we're going to play it more. Okay, well that so, sounds good. So My you... number nine is Guillotine, and Guillotine is a card game that has the theme of the French Revolution. And so you're getting to chop people's heads off, <laughs> which I know is kind of morbid sounding, but this is such a funny game because the cards are so hysterical. They're yeah. just, they're really made comical. So you don't feel like 
you're being a really bad person for chopping off their heads. Yeah, but the people that in the game are based on real oh, people. Oh, I know. And they're, it's horrible <laughs> because they did do that. And I just try not to think of that that it really, <laughs> it really happened. <laughs> but, you know, we've had this game a long time. We used to play a lot more in the past. So you're we basically did. saying that you want to play it more again. I would like to very yeah. much. Yes, I like it a lot. All right, so let's take a look at our number eight. All right. Okay, so my number eight is uh, 1960 Making of the President, which is an area control, area influence game where it's simulating the election between Nixon and Kennedy. It's kind of like Twilight Struggle, uh, but it's a, a political game. So you're managing your hands of cards and you're trying to score the most points uh, within so many rounds. So, like I said, it's an alternative to Twilight Struggle, a game that you don't like. Huh. It has quality components. Now, it is a little long. Just a little. So, I'm aware of that. So, we're probably going to figure out a way to play with less turns and still or get the feel of the game. you play with someone who's into that kind of stuff. Like, maybe my dad, who's into Well, yeah, he was a social studies teacher, too. He, he was. retired. He might but, like that. But the point is, your only problem is that it was too long. Oh, it was way too long. Yeah, so we'll probably Just try to play way too long. Uh, less turns and see, and see how that goes. Okay. So well, your my number eight, eight is Sushi Go, and this is a good card game for two to five players. So luckily, it's something we can play together because it's two to five. Um, it's a card drafting game, and it's also a set collecting game. What I I like about it, I have to admit, is the art is so darn cute. They are just drawn so fun, um, which makes it a fun thing for me to play. Um, I've only think we've played it once or twice. Yeah, well, all these games we've only played once yeah. or twice. And I enjoyed it back, you know, when I played it. So I, I would like to, you know, maybe get back into it again because just it's just such a happy looking game. And You're right, and I like this game too. It's a it's a nice uh, card drafting game. Yeah, uh, we just have try the, and get the most points to win. And we have the uh, party version. Mm. Which you haven't played yet, which no, I think I you'll like even more. So more than likely, we're going to play the party version, okay, uh, rather than this version. That works for me as long as I get to play these cute little people. Right. I don't even like sushi, but I would play it again. And I do like sushi. <laughs> okay. All right. So our next one, my next one, is Cytosis, a cell biology board game. And now we backed this also on Kickstarter. It's a worker placement, score the most points. Uh, science themed game mm -hmm. so it's a great theme it has some interaction where players try to compete for taking uh, the spots you know you only have so many workers that can go in certain spots uh -huh. and it's very educational so uh, this company is getting better at tying uh, of making the science theme more engaging and not so abstract so you're going to see on our other segment there's a list of games that we don't want to play anymore and uh, there's a game from this company that we so it's kind of an interesting balance. This game came later, and I think that this game plays is an excellent. It's much better than the game you're going to see in our next list. Ah. So okay, so for you, Julie, you picked Jumbo, and I picked it because it's a two-player game, which I was trying to find stuff that he and I could play together. Um, and this game, you get to pretend you're a trader, and you get to trade all sorts of uh, really interesting and um, helpful uh sources through your cards and such um and what i liked is the theme it's it's really based off real things that happen and um the artwork is really nice but i just i really liked the theme i thought it was just a really no, nice it's, it's, interesting yeah it has enough depth to, in it that i'm yeah. in fact we've looked into getting the expansions which are out of print mm. it might cost a little bit more than i like like to pay but uh <laughs> if we do end up playing this one more we'll probably uh okay. sh shell out for the expansions which have bookmarked i know where we can get them oh okay wonderful that'll be fun all right so let's take a look at our number six uh oh, number like six is flip city which we played in october at ring con and we only played it a couple times and it's a great deck building press your luck and you're building a city and it's your racing to score uh so many points mm -hmm. now it's very quick it's a great two player and it's a nice filler so you don't remember this one as much, but we did get an expansion for it that we haven't tried yet. So uh, we're always looking for filler games. And this is one This just hasn't come up. Is not at the, you know, we're not cognitively thinking about no. it on our list of, oh, let's play that game. There's other games that have, have come to our, that we remember more often. So again, this, we're setting this goal to, to play this one more and see if it will join our list of games that, we, that are more of our go-to games. Definitely. All right, so for you? My number six is Parfum. 
Uh, again, it's a two to four player game, so we've mainly played this just as a two player game. Uh, it's a set collection game and a dice rolling game, so I get to roll my fun dice. And you also get to jar, uh, excuse me, car <laughs> draft cards in this game. So it's a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. which I think is makes it so exciting and fun because you just you get to do a little of everything, which is neat. And you get to build um, perfume bottles that you're selling. You're, you're trying to make the perf prettiest one to sell it to end up getting the most points. Right, and there's a little bit of pressure luck in it that you might not remember. Um, I don't remember that. That's no. because you get to. Uh, you can reroll your dice to get if you're trying to go for certain types of uh, perfumes. So oh. we got this on sale, uh, and this game is heavily discounted. And you can get this game as well for real cheap. Still, I looked it oh, up really? today. Oh, really? Oh, good. And so we like it a lot. Some people think it's too light, uh, but I agree that this is something that we can play more often. Yep. All That's right. So really let's take fun. a look at our next one. All right, number five. Okay, so Yokohama. We had we also backed this on Kickstarter. We had the deluxe version, and we played this at RingCon in Tucson at the convention, and it was taught to us. And we played it once, and I liked it a lot. And I know you liked it enough to want to try it again. So it's a it's a network type building uh, worker placement game where you have to place your workers in a in a line, and then you can go back and pick them up. So you're collecting sets to score the most points. So it has really cool choices, and it has a nice tension in the player interaction because. If you remember, if you put your workers in the same spot as another worker, and when you go back to pick things up, there you have to pay more. I think I remember that. So that was Vaguely. a cool thing, is that you could kind of block people uh, from going for certain things and how you mm. place your workers. So it has a really nice interaction. Now, the reason why we probably haven't played it uh, uh, since then is because it does require a lot of effort to set up. It's a, it takes up a lot of table space. Oh, that's, so, that makes a big difference. My but otherwise, number, oh, that's, what's been, that's what's been stopping us from playing that. Um, my number five is Lotus. Um, Lotus is a two to four player game. And we've only played this, I believe, as just a two player game. Um, and no, I think we played with David once. Did we? Yeah. Uh, it's a set collection game. It's a beautiful card game. You are placing cards to make flowers. Um and yeah sets of flowers sets of flowers excuse me and what's nice is the results are different each time it's played because sometimes you're not going for the same flowers you right. did before because it's um, a card game so it's gonna be random it, right and then if you are playing with more players then it's even more challenging to get the, as many sets of cards as you'd like to be able to win the game right. but it is i this is probably one of the most prettiest games we yes. have ever played another thing that it has too you can have your little mascots, I forgot what they're called, that you can put oh, on the flowers that's right. to, to, uh, to give you uh, more points. More points. Right. So when my brother's coming back in the town here, and I got him a copy, and he hasn't learned it yet. So he wants us to teach it to him, so I know we will be, for sure we'll oh, be playing Oh, wonderful. This one. I'm happy for that because I do like just how beautiful the flowers do turn out when you're done making them. Yeah, it's, an ex it's a very pretty game. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, so our next one, number four, is Whistle Stop. And again, we've only played this once, and it's an action point uh we have only so many actions with your trains and you got it's a pick up and deliver where you're collecting sets of things and you're racing the score of the most points uh, it's very strategic and the attention is in moving uh your trains and blocking other players from going to certain tiles mm -hmm. and there's a lot of variety in the tiles uh because there's it lays out differently every time right so we've only that's played true. this once and we liked it a lot and we just haven't no, we need put to, it out again. We so need that's, to do it again. That's why it's it's on our list. That's right. I know you liked it as well. I did, and I happen to really like Star Realms. Um, I played this with our friends uh, George and Mary. I actually played it with George, and I watched him play it a few times, and just really liked the the interaction. It's just a two player fighting game, and it's based in space. Obviously, it's Star Realms. Um, and it's just you're you are um, building your deck to also um, be able to attack your opponent's bases because if they get to zero, you win. Right. So you're trying. It's like Magic: The Gathering, where in Magic you have 20 points, you're trying to knock them down to zero. In this, your opponent has 60 points, you're trying to knock them down to zero. Right. So we have played this, and in the past, even before we started recording, we did play this a lot back when we were in Tucson. You might not remember, no. uh, so, but it's fallen off the list, and 
We've also backed the Kickstarter for the whole new set, so we're going to oh. be getting that within a couple months here. Oh, how exciting! Uh, maybe That'll in a be month, fun. a whole bunch of new Star Wars. I mean, Star Realms. Uh, Sorry. Uh, expansions. All right. So next one. Number three is. Okay, so you haven't played this yet. I played this at Ring Con because I knew that we were getting this. Oh, okay. And we have it now. We backed this as well on Kickstarter. Oh my gosh, I think majority of our games you picked are Kickstarter games. Right. And it's just because we have so many other games and they come in and we try it out. Mm -hmm. And then there's other games that we play or ha or you need to play and we just forget about it. Well, this True. one, I haven't played this with you yet. So it's a dexterity fantasy dungeon master game. In other words, one person is the dungeon master and the other players are characters. So it's a, it's a, a flicking game. Mm -hmm. And you have scenarios and I think there's even a campaign now. And so it's like pitch car instead of race cars. It's a you know it's going into a dungeon. So it's very thematic and has a great fantasy theme. So I know you like pitch car. I do. So this is a little bit more complicated, oh, but not great. by much because your characters just have some spells. Like you might have a wizard that has a little fireball they got to flick. <laughs> okay, or you're the fighter and, you, and you're a little bit you're bigger and you throw yourself in the combat. <laughs> so mainly is you got to run into people. Or if you have ranged weapons, you got to shoot arrows or shoot fireballs. That sounds so, fun. Again, we just haven't played it yet because part of the reason why is because i got to put all the stickers on the discs. Oh. And I just haven't had a chance to do that yet. Been a little busy. All right, so for you... Mine is Till Dawn. And we actually played this thing for the second time when our friends Amanda and Anthony were here. And I forgot how much I enjoyed it. It is a four to eight player game, so we cannot play this by ourselves. We have to have our friends or, or our boys or somebody else playing with us. Right. It is a fun pressure luck game. Yeah, but got, we like it more better than zombie uh, zombie dice. Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. And you um, get to play a character, and you are a vampire. And there's certain places that your vampire. Uh, is like their home base type of thing like a stadium or a shopping mall um and you f it, you take turns flipping up a card and depending on what the card says you get extra blood or extra points for that right well the whole, the whole point is you're pressing your luck to get you're, blood you're yeah the and most then, and then and then after so many rounds whoever has the most blood that's uh, what wins. i was gonna say but we did a video on this and that's why i'm that way i'm uh you don't need to go into so much detail because you can watch our other video where oh, we right. covered this. That's right. So uh, look for a video on Till Dawn and why we liked that game. And so you're setting the goal to play it more when we have at least four yes, players. Yes, definitely. All right, so let's take a look at our number two. Okay. So our number two is Zombie Side Green Horde. Hey, another Kickstarter game that we backed. Oh, surprise, surprise. So we played it once, and uh, it's a cooperative fantasy theme, tacti uh, tactile, tactile, no, tactile. I don't know. Tactical. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Tactical miniature game with, with scenarios. So it adds some new rules like hedge uh, hedges and on water terrain and the tri uh, trebuchet. And it has uh, a horde mechanic where you can get a, a, a run over by a bunch of zombies. And then it has. we have a bunch of expansions that we have not explored yet. So mm -hmm. I know the boys like this game. We just haven't put, pulled it out yet uh, mm -hmm. as much. No. So... Here is your number Mine is two. Dominion, and we played this a bunch when we were still living in Tucson. And I really enjoyed it. I like the uh, the card drafting mechanic. It is a two- to four-player game, but we haven't played it as a two-player game, I don't think, ever since we've been here and been tra keeping no, track usually, of Yeah, things. we've usually played with David or Eddie. Yeah, we try at least play with three or four players. Um, your goal is to wanting to draft the best card in your hands, or excuse me, your hand, so you can end up then getting the most points right. with what cards you have in your hand. Which are different uh, terrain features, and so when a certain, right. so I think it's I forget how many piles have to run out again. Then the game ends, and you uh, count how many of those. Uh, I think it's three piles. Yeah, I don't remember. That's because we don't we haven't played it a lot no. lately. But we have a bunch of expansions. We probably have about five expansions that we haven't even opened. Haven't yet. even opened. And so this, and that's because we have other games that are on our list that right. we come to mind before. A lot faster. Yeah, because it takes time to set up the game. You got to put out the decks. It does take a long time, but it's worth it. I think it's once you get going, it's it's a lot of fun. Right. And you you forget how much time it took to get set up. Right, but, but that's what's been preventing like us. That's what's preventing again. us from doing this is the setup. But uh, I agree. It's definitely a game that I would like to play more as well. 
Alrighty. All right, so here is my number one. My number one is Champions of Midgard, and it's the expansions. And yeah, hey, wow, what a surprise! We backed this also on Kickstarter. Wow, what do you know? And we got the uh, the mat. The, uh, the remember the giant mat that we yes, got. So yes, yes. it's easy to set up. It just hasn't. It's like I look at it sometimes. I go, wow, well, I got it. It does require a little bit more effort than the other games, so that's why I haven't put it on the table as much. But it is one of my favorite worker placement games. It has a push-your-luck mechanic. You're managing dice as workers, kind of. Uh, and it's you're trying to score the most points. It has a great immersive theme, a Viking theme. It has nice tension because it is a little, it has a little bit of push-your-luck. And the expansion has a lot of nice add-ons. Uh, a lot of options. Mm -hmm. So I know you like this game as well. In fact, I'd rather play this than Stone Age, which used to be our number one uh, worker placement game. But the thing is, the Stone Age is easy to set up. Right. This one got to lay out the mat. And you got a whole bunch of decks, <laughs> and then it just requires more time than I'm usually willing to put into it. Right. But it's worth it because it's a great game. It is fun. All right, so for you, and I was surprised you picked this one. I forgot that we haven't played this one as much. I like Wyatt Herb, and um, it's a two to four player game. However, I prefer to play it with more than two people. It's I think it's more fun that way. Um, but it is a rummy style game, and I do like playing gin rummy. We haven't played that. Mm -hmm. I think I played that growing up. So I don't think yeah, I've me ever, too. ever. Well, we haven't played it together though. No, we haven't no. because we have games that are that. That's simulate Rumi. <laughs> That's right. Um, so it is a select uh, cards collection game, and it has a Wild West theme, which is really fun. So you are playing a sheriff or the good guys, and your cards are the cards that are laid out. You're trying to get the bad guys. Uh, oh my gosh, Jesse James, Bob Dalton. Bob Dalton. Yeah, yeah. Um, Oh, other heck, people. I don't remember all the other people, but you're trying to to get them, and you're putting money down on the cards well, yeah, as you there's place rewards on them. As you right. play, lay down your your set of your set you've collected, you then for that person, then you put money down on their card out here, and then in the end, whoever gets them after the round that round is over you get all that money so your goal at the end is to have the most money well you don't get it all because you if well, you, you have, have to share it that's true it depends you, it depends uh depends on the set that you collect if you have the most and it's by a spread of like four or five points you get it all right but if you're with if there's two people close you share the money so there's but the cool thing is it's a great rummy style but the point uh, is, is you're trying to get the most money at the end. Right, you want right. to be the rich sheriff at the end. Richest so, sheriff. <laughs> I agree with you. We used to play this game a lot, and yeah. we should play it more. We should. So there is our uh, top ten games that we've only played once or twice in the last two years that we want to play more. We hope you all enjoy it. And hopefully this will spark some interest in maybe what's in your library, and maybe you'll want to pull it out and, right. and remember why you, you bought it in the first place like we just did. So if you enjoyed this, please subscribe and... Uh, like. Thank you for watching. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.